Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to mute or desaturate every color on the color wheel. If you remember last week's video, one of them, I talked about the importance of saturation, but I haven't gone into the technique side of things and actually show you how I desaturate different colors. So this is exactly what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you a, a very simple trick for understanding which ones to use in order to desaturate. It's just really simple and straightforward and I think you'll find it helpful, so let's get started. So before I quickly demo how this works uh, in action, we're gonna look at a color wheel and this is the best color wheel I have here. Hopefully it will get the job done. So here's the thing. What happens when, just intuitively speaking, if you mix all of these colors, what mixture are you gonna get? Well, think about it for a moment or two, and the answer most people will come to is probably either black or a really dirty brown, okay? Now, what most often will happen is you'll get a black or a gray, something like that, something very desaturated, because that's what happens when you mix all colors. Now, let's think about it this way. Here we have the red, we have the yellow, and we have the blue. So these are the three primary colors, if you will. Now, if you look at these three primary colors, every other color on the wheel is, in theory, mixed from those. You get the violets, you get the different types of blues and green blues, you get the greens, the oranges. It all stems from the yellow, red, and blue. So what happens if we just mix those three, yellow, red, uh, and blue? What you will get is also a gray, okay? And it depends on which primaries you choose. Uh, you know, the, some mixes will lead to a cleaner gray. Uh, if you go th uh, third, 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 some will not, and you need to play around with the quantities a bit, but generally speaking, you'll get a gray. So, this is why when I always say, if I have a red, I'm gonna use my yellow and blue to mute it, because that's essentially the same as using all of the colors you see here. Okay, now if I have a blue and I want to mute it, I'll mute it with red and yellow. Now if I want to mute it and be warmer, I'll go with red. If I want to mute it to be cooler, I'll go with yellow. The same thing for every one of these three primary colors. I'm going to use the other two to mute the first one. Okay, now what happens when you don't have a primary color? You have like a green or you have an orange. How do you mute those? How do you desaturate them? So it's a very interesting and, and simple response. If you have a green, you use the complementary color, okay? What's on the opposing side of it? Red. If you have an orange, you use blue. If you have a red or violet, you use a yellow green. Now, why? Why is that the case? Because, look at this green. What is it made out of? Blue and yellow. So, blue and yellow and red. It's essentially the same. To mute this green, you use red because you already have within this green a blue and a yellow. Does that make sense? Same goes for orange. So let's look at um, this orange, for example. It's made of red and yellow. So what are you gonna mute it with? This blue-green. Why? Because this already has red and yellow. So what are we missing? The red and blue, the blue and yellow, okay? Or, you know, it really depends and it can move slightly and this color wheel obviously isn't perfect. It's not the end all be all. But generally speaking, if you have a secondary color, just look at the opposing color on the color wheel and that's how you mute it because it's usually made with the other two primary colors um, or with the primary color you don't have here, okay? How would it make sense? So red is blue and uh, so violet is uh, red and blue, what's on the opposite side? Either yellow or green, okay? So this is how I approach it. Now after this lengthy explanation, let me zoom in, I'm gonna show you how it's done. So you don't have to see my palette really, I'm just gonna show you the gist of it, okay? Because I have been asked the last time, as I mentioned, how to actually do this in practice, in technique. Uh, so we have this red here, okay? Now, how will I mute this red? Very simply, uh, and very easily by simply adding some blue and yellow. Okay, so let me add some blue here. And this is something I have shown in previous videos, but not necessarily from this angle uh, in terms of how it's done. So I'm gonna start adding more blue and more yellow. And as I mentioned, some primary colors will not produce a perfect gray, but it is most definitely less saturated than our uh, original red, you see? So here's a gray version of it. You have to play around with it, add a bit more blue, add a bit more yellow, find uh, the, the perfect combo. You may get a warm gray or a cool gray, but this is basically how you will do it. So let me show you another one. Let's go here for this yellow, okay? And I wanna go real clean here, so 
we have this yellow here. Now, how shall we mute this? And let's preserve the value. Let's not make it darker in the process. So I'm gonna take this yellow here and I'm just gonna add a bit of blue into it and a bit of red, I have red here. Now you see it's starting to be green. You can barely see it, my bad. So if it's green, you add more uh, red because the opposite of green is red. You just keep adding more of the different paints until you get something that's muted. Now it's still quite, quite yellow, so let's add more blue. And now we get more towards the gray. Now let's lighten it up because I promised I don't wanna make it darker, so here we go, okay? The um, lighter variation of gray, you see? So this is gray, this is a yellow. Let's choose now a secondary color. So I don't have many, but I do have this green. So how will I neutralize this green? What does this green have in it? Uh, red, uh, yellow and blue, correct? So in order to neutralize yellow and blue, what's missing? Red, you got it right. So I'm gonna use either, you know, there are multiple reds. I actually have here, for example, Quinacridone Rose, which is cooler, and Pyrrole Scarlet, which is warmer. Now, my experience tells me that Pyrrole Scarlet will actually be better for muting this. So I'm gonna use that and we'll see what we get. It's not gonna be perfect. Maybe I'm mistaken, by the way. Let's try it with the other one, the Quinacridone. And remember, this is, for example, sap green. It's not made just from blue uh, and, and, um, and yellow. It's actually made of, uh, there is a bit of orange here. So you have to really know what the color is made of or you don't have to know anything. You just experiment and try it out until you're able to mute it. So if I'm gonna add a bit more blue to it, a bit more red to it, a bit more yellow to it. I will at some point be able to find uh, the happy medium that's more towards gray. You see here? Uh, so I hope that makes sense. Now, it's funny because this is the hardest part. How do we go from low saturation to high saturation? So this is something I haven't really talked about the last time, but what I do is use the principle of overpowering the mixture. Okay, so let's say I have this huge mix here and it's a big mess, okay? So all of these colors and I get this gray. Okay, now how do I turn it from low saturation to high saturation? First, let's choose a color. So let's go from this to which color do you want me to use? Let's use blue because we don't have blue here. So all I'm doing is adding more blue to this very same mix. You see, and it turns more and more blue. I'm gonna add a bit more and it goes more blue. I'm gonna add a bit more directly to it, okay? Let's just use the blue here cleanly. And you see, so that's how you go from low saturation to high saturation. You simply, um, you simply overpower the gray mix with the color you wanna go in uh, the direction of. So if you wanna go blue, you just add more and more blue. And that's how you go from muted to saturated. I hope that makes sense. It's a really quick one just to get the point across again. If you wanna go from high saturation to low saturation, you need to mute down the color. How do you do that? either with the two other complementary um, uh, primary colors, if it's one of the primary colors, or if it's a secondary color, you go with um, the one that's in front of it on the color wheel, what's called the complementary color. Now, if it's a tertiary color, or it's just a brown, you don't know, just add a bit of everything. You'll eventually get there. That's how I mute. Now, you will find some interesting twin combinations that produce really nice grays. One good example, very famous one, is French Ultramarine and uh, Burnt Sienna. That's what everyone uses at some point to produce uh, um, grays and interesting browns and interesting blues that are muted. Same goes for maybe um, uh, raw umber or burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine. Same goes for red and green. I used to use that a lot in the past. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. It's fairly straightforward. You just follow this formula. And if you're uncertain, just add a bit of everything and you'll surely be able to mute it, okay? And it's all about the quantities. It takes a long time to master this, okay? I wanna really emphasize this. It took me like two years just to feel comfortable with this kind of a thing, not even understanding how to utilize it, but just knowing how to mute properly and just even being aware of how important that is. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it again. I hope you enjoyed this one. Get a color wheel, it can help. You don't have to, you can make your own, by the way. If you wanna take a screenshot of this and just make a, an identical one, okay? And these are really helpful for these things. With that, as you know, I'm not too big on um, colors. It's just a means for me. It's secondary to values. But again, everyone has their own approach, their own style. And if you are more of a color painter and you love to use lots of colors, it really is worth 
learning these things. Okay, so I want to thank you so much again. And I'm going to ask you if you enjoyed this video to drop a comment down below, leave a like, it really helps me reach more people. Don't forget to subscribe if you still aren't I have tons of videos like this one, and also tutorials and all sorts of different things. And also if you want to learn how to paint like me from observation, have fun, enjoy the process, let it go and get the results you want. Be sure to check out my frustration free watercolor course link in the description box below. Thank you so much. I will catch you again in the next vid.